First of all, Mel, welcome and thank you so much for giving up your time to come and be here with us today. The VCEP class have been lucky enough to listen to you speak before and also have you teaching a thing or two on the basketball court. Um, what I wanted to start off with today is the fact that you've always played a lot of sport but you haven't always played it in a wheelchair. Um, can you talk us through your disability and, and how it came about? Yeah, so um, I acquired my disability when I was 18, so I just finished school and just started uni. Um, so my disability is quite unique. Um, so for me, it's from asthma medication. Uh, the asthma medication works with the muscles in my legs, in my stomach, in my back, and also the nerves are disconnected as well. Um, asthma medication, the ones that I'm on, is not the general kind of asthma meds that people would be on for your standard asthma. So the drugs I was on are normally used for chemo, for cancer, for things like that. Um, so my story is very unique. I'm one in 10 in the world. Um, and it's not going to get better, so I'm going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Um, yeah, that, that's how my disability occurred nine years ago. Yeah. Um, it's difficult for any of us to imagine what that must have been like for you, but I suppose we all have this idea of how our life's going to pan out and, and different things can happen that are out of our control. What advice would you give to people who are obviously in a different position to you but overcoming their own challenges? Mm -hmm. um, for me, in actually um, starting to have to use a wheelchair and having to adjust to life living with a disability. It was very difficult to start with. Um, my family, my friends, the, my uni, my work, everyone um, didn't know how to react to me, didn't know how to respond, didn't know, you know, they, they kind of gave up on any career or any aspirations that I might have um, because suddenly I was the poor to say I would get. Suddenly I was in a wheelchair um, and, and my life was looking like I would never leave home, like I'd never go back to work, go back to uni and things like that. Um, so my family, my friends were a huge support for me um, in actually overcoming the fact that I've got a disability. It took a lot of um, mental strength, a lot of courage, a lot of resilience, a lot of determination as well to overcome what everyone else expected that I wasn't able to do. To be able to say, you know, you you expect I can't play sport, you expect I won't go back to work, go back to uni, go back to living the life as fully as I was beforehand. But in fact I'm going to do that and I'm going to do better than I was beforehand. Um, I, I never would have imagined being able to play sport for Victoria, for Australia. Um, now I'm representing my country, I'm playing wheelchair basketball, now I'm working, now I'm studying, now I'm, now I'm doing everything that I might have wanted to do one day, but it certainly wasn't looking likely about nine years ago, so yeah. when you visited us earlier in the year, the Year 12 class in particular were amazed, and as was I, at how independent you are. We watched you drive yourself here and get yourself in and out of your car and things like that. Have you had any restrictions? And I suppose, is there anything you feel like you can't do because of your disability? Um, having a disability, especially a physical disability where your legs are affected, um, when we're born, the average person, their legs are strong. Their arms are strong too, but their legs are born to be able to walk, to be able to run, to be able to mobilise you. Um, when your legs aren't active, that your full mobility relies on your arms. Um, for me, for example, I'm injured at the moment, so I'm not actually playing sport in the next couple of weeks. But, um, but in being injured, I've injured one shoulder, which means three limbs are out of action, not just the one shoulder. Um, so that does make life very difficult, especially pushing a chair. Um, I had surgery on my wrist earlier this year. Um, that means I can't push a chair whatsoever. That means I'm stuck in bed until someone literally lifts me out of bed into my chair, just move from my chair onto the toilet and things like that. So it does make life very difficult simply having a physical disability um, in the lower limbs. But in saying that, in being able to do things, I can do most things everyone else can do. Sometimes I need a bit of ex extra assistance. Um, sometimes I might take a bit longer. So for me, just to get out of bed, to get in the shower, to get into the car, the quickest it would take me every morning is about an hour um, just to be able to get out of bed and into the car, getting ready and things like that. So timing is a huge issue. Um, as, as Dale said, I can drive a car. I can drive any automatic car in Australia with hand control. So you guys drive with your feet, I drive with my hands. My car is exactly the same as anyone else's from outwards appearance. Um, I can climb up and down stairs. Um, I can go to the theatre, I can go to the footy. Uh, with basketball, we travel every couple of weeks of the year. So um, we can travel, we can do most things. There's, there's a few things like um, if I wanted to go to the AFL, I can't choose what seat I want to sit in. I sit in the disabled bay. Um, if there's, you know, so many people in wheelchairs already there, I'm sent home and things like that. You go to the theatre, there's one wheelchair seat in the whole theatre. So it does make it hard and you have to plan well in advance. But if you do plan, and as long as you're happy not to be spontaneous, you can live as fully a life as you want. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
Fantastic. Um, I'm interested to know also what, what role has sport played in your life and, and has that role changed according to your personal circumstances changing as well uh, from before my disability? Yeah. yeah. Um, so before my disability, when I was in school, I, um, I kayaked, I played netball, I played volleyball. Um, when I was younger, I did swimming, tennis, kind of the average kind of sports everyone does. But for me, in um, turning 18 and you know, suddenly having a disability, I didn't play sport for about five years, um, primarily because I didn't know sport existed for people with disability, and also because there was a lot of challenges that I had to overcome, just being able to push a wheelchair every day. So sport um, has kind of helped me in meeting a lot of other people with disability, in meeting people and being like, I have a disability. The disability doesn't define who I am. I define who I am. Just because I'm in a wheelchair, it doesn't mean I'm any different. And a lot of these people taught me these things, um, the sport people. So um, in starting to play sport, I learned how to get up and down gutters. I learned how to push my chair properly so I could go fast. I learned how to push up and down a hill, which really is just average day-to-day -day life skills. But in starting to play sport, in starting to meet other people with disability, I think that was probably the major thing for me in not... Um, you know, getting better at sport, but in learning how to live a life as a person with a disability. Yeah. And who are your main role models, or who's been the main influence on you from a sporting perspective? Oh, from sport? Um, so, from a sporting perspective, I probably... Um, in, in wheelchair basketball, there's a lot of senior players that are about to retire next year. So a lot of the team in the Paralympic team for next year have been playing for about 15 years. Um, I've only been playing for three years. So they're certainly uh, role models in terms of teaching me how to play, teaching me how to stay in the game, teaching me uh, resilience and determination within a team environment. But in terms of sport, I guess, there's a lot of tennis players that um, show these kind of skills that of how to, how to compete, how to, um, how to be at your best game for yourself, how to recover properly, how not to just you know, jump on the court and expect the best. So, um, yeah, does that, does that kind of answer? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you were telling me backstage that you start your days at 4 a.m. Can yeah. you give us a bit of an insight into the, a, a day in the life of an elite wheelchair basketball? Yeah, so um, as an elite wheelchair basketball, we actually train a lot with the Australian basketballers, so the Opals and the Boomers. Um, some of you guys might have gone to see the game over the weekend. Um, but we train with them and we train at the BIS and we train interstate as well. So um, we get up at 4 a.m. every day um, to start training at 6 a.m. to about 9 or 10 or whenever I come out to these schools or um, go to work. Um, so we finish at around 9 a.m., we go to work, we do whatever we do during the day, and then we finish up around 4 or 5, however long you work, um, and then we train again three nights a week. So six mornings a week and three nights a week. Um, and if we're not working in the day, we've got a bit of extra training and video analysis as well. Sounds cool. Um, we hear a lot about inequalities in sport, particularly between genders. How do you assess the support provided to um, athletes with disabilities <laughs> compared with athletes who are able-bodied? Yeah. Um, so athletes with a disability, obviously there's very little media coverage. So if you guys have ever seen a sport for people with disability on the TV, that's pretty amazing because there's very, very few. Um, Channel 7 have actually um, signed up to show the whole Paralympics for next year, which is great. But in terms of so media, there's very little support there. In terms of wages, we do get flat paid um, to play wheelchair basketball. So we do get a minimal wage, but it's certainly not enough. Um, and it's certainly not the same as an able-bodied basketball player, a footy player, or any other kind of sport. Um, in Australia, wheelchair basketball and swimming are the only two sports currently um, where you actually get a wage to play. So all the other sports like murder ball, wheelchair rugby, uh, netball, volleyball, football, um, any rugby, anything else, um, they don't actually get paid, so it's very difficult. Again, in wheelchair basketball, we're fortunate we get sponsored. Um, so I don't pay for any of my travel. I don't pay for any of my accommodation, my uniforms. Um, we're sponsored by 2XU, so we get all compression gear free. Um, so we do get a lot of benefits. Um, but I'm lucky. I, I'm playing in a sport that is actually known, almost. Um, it's got more media coverage than any other sport, and we've got none. Um, so if you play any other sport, unfortunately, there, there, there's nothing really there for you, and you have to actually foot your own bill for all your own equipment or your travel or your accommodation, your carers, your support team, your physios, your doctors, your coaches. So wheelchair basketball, I'm very, very lucky, but unfortunately, probably most of the other sports, not so much. Yeah. I know you have spoken about, in the past, the, the cost associated with your chairs and things like that. Can you talk us through how many chairs you have and, and how expensive they are? Um, so chairs are probably the biggest barrier for people with disability to actually participate in sport. Um, so my day chair, this is literally the chair that I use 
every day not in sport costs $8,000 out of pocket. Um, my basketball chair costs upwards of $10,000 out of pocket and I need a new one every three years. Um, we don't get funding or anything for these chairs, so these are entirely um, out of our own pocket. So ultimately, if people don't have the money, if people don't have the financial support, the family support, um, able to get a loan, they're not able to play basketball, which probably is um, quite hard for you guys to imagine because you've probably grown up just you know going down to the local swimming pool, going down to the local basketball club, netball club, tennis club, whatever it is you guys want to participate in. But for people with disability, it's so difficult because of costs. Um, and if I wanted to play tennis or rugby or any other sport, every single sport chair is different for every single sport. Um, so I can't just try basketball for a couple of weeks and hate it and there goes $10,000. Um, so I have to actually commit before I get a chair. So it is very, very difficult for people with disability to get involved in sport. Yeah. You're currently in the squad for the Paralympics for Rio. Um, is, has it always been your goal to be, become an Olympian? Um, since playing wheelchair basketball starting about three years ago, yes, it certainly has. Before then, um, my family, there's about... So I've got three siblings and four foster siblings as well, so there's quite a lot of us. Um, and growing up, I was always the least likely to ever, ever, ever play sport in my life. Um, so I, I did play sport, but I was always... I was always chosen last, I was kind of on the bench. I enjoyed it, like it was good, but um, I would certainly never, you know, the expectations, I would never achieve a whole lot in sport. Um, so for me, Paralympics, Olympics, I enjoy watching it, but that's the extent of it. So um, to now actually be on the team, to travel um, internationally, to be able to play for Australia next year, so long as I don't get injured anymore, um, I, I never would have expected it. My family certainly didn't expect it, yeah. I'm sure they're very proud of you. Um, you seem very positive and determined. What advice would you give anyone pursuing their own goals, whether they're sporting or otherwise? Um, for me, pursuing goals, it's, as I, as I kind of mentioned before, it's almost um, people didn't expect me to be able to achieve a whole lot. So in my mind, I'm doing it to prove them wrong. I'm doing it um, to say, you know, you expect that I have a disability, I'm not able to achieve things. I'm going to achieve things beyond what you expect me to. So um, it's that determination that I'm not going to give up. Um, I think it's, it's also in my family, in my life. My family, my parents, my friends and my close friends have been a huge support. Um, a lot of people talk about when they have their disability, suddenly their friends are no longer their friends. They've got to make new friends. They don't know, you know, they kind of feel left out, kind of feel ignored, kind of feel disqualified from society as well as their friends. But for me, my friends and family stuck by me like glue, which is incredible. Um, and so I think their support has certainly helped me a lot. Um, I think mental resilience and mental determination and strength as well. Um, for me, in playing wheelchair basketball, I get exhausted. I'm waking up at 4am every single day, going to bed at whatever time if I finish training, working, studying, everything during the day. Um, I get exhausted and physically just, I want to give up a lot of the, not a lot of the time, but sometimes. Um, and in having the, having the knowledge that in giving up, I'm not going to achieve anything. Nevertheless, basketball, but I'm not going to be able to finish uni, I'm not going to be able to work. I need to keep pushing myself um, far more than what probably the average person would. Um, for me, if I give up, if I you know, can't be bothered getting up at 4am, there goes my basketball for the day, there goes my work, there goes everything else. So I think it's my family and my friends' support. I think it's also resilience and mental determination to make sure I make the most out of my day every single day. Um, because as I said, I've met a lot of people with disability and a lot of their disabilities are caused, caused from um, like reckless behaviour, from things that could be prevented, from things that, you know, they don't need it. They should not have their disability. Um, it occurred because... They were reckless, they were careless, they thought they were invincible. So to make sure I make the most of the opportunities every day, because I know so many of the people that didn't make the most of the opportunities, and I can see where their life is now. So I think in a roundabout way, if that made sense, um, just making sure every single day I make the most of the opportunities, and I take up any opportunities that are given to me as well. Now, we'd love to keep chatting to you, but we are short of time. Um, Thank you so much for coming out and speaking with us. Your story is incredibly inspiring. Um, wish you all the best of luck for all your sporting endeavours that are coming up. And we look forward to following your progress on the road to Rio.